Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name's Sarah and I'm the mom of a one-year-old little boy named George. And today I'm going to be sharing with you some Montessori materials that I've DIY'd. some of you might be wondering what a Montessori material exactly is. When we think of kids playing in their spaces, we often think of playing with toys. And Maria Montessori actually said that play is the work of the child. So in Montessori, what we think of in terms of toys is a word that we call materials. We have them in two different categories. You can think of them in terms of open-ended, meaning your imagination can run wild and there's really no end to it. Like blocks, for example, is your classic open-ended activity. You can make blocks in all kinds of different forms and ideas and they can do whatever they want with the blocks and there's really no end to it. Your imagination just runs wild with it. So that would be an open-ended example. And a closed-ended toy or closed-ended activity is something that has an end to it. So puzzle would be one a really good example you put the pieces together and that's the end once it's finished it's finished so a lot of Montessori materials tend to be closed-ended there's a purpose to the activity there's a goal in mind and typically there would be a lesson to be learned so it's a lot of problem-solving it's a lot of them figuring out for themselves and that kind of thing so when you're looking at closed-ended materials you might hear the phrase self-correcting so when you hear self-correcting that basically means what it sounds it means like we'll go back to the puzzle example when you put two pieces of the puzzle together there's only one way that it can work out and that is a self-correcting activity so the puzzle will show that that's the only way to do it so it corrects itself if that makes sense it's a little bit hard to explain but those are some phrases that you might want to look a little further into the open-ended the closed-ended and then from there you would look into the self-correcting activities so a lot of Montessori tends to be closed-ended and a lot of it tends to be self-correcting as as well so those are some examples that I'm going to show you today quick reminder if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to support me you can hit the subscribe button and if you want to hear more videos that I have coming out hit the notification button I plan on putting out content every single Thursday at noon so let's jump into it all right so I have had a couple of comments on certain DIY projects that I've put up on my insta and as I've mentioned in previous videos I really am passionate about the idea that Montessori shouldn't be out of reach for anybody that you don't have to have a large bank account to be able to afford Montessori materials and that doing Montessori is all about materials anyways but they are definitely a part of it so one way that I like to get around this is to DIY my Montessori materials some of these aren't 100% Montessori. They're just really great DIY projects for your baby or your toddler. So I will jump right into them. The first one I'm going to start with is these bowls. So one of the activities that I've seen, it's more of a practical life activity, the skill of scooping something out and putting it into something else. So this can work with small, I even do it in our learning tower with Cheerios and a kitchen spoon from bowl to bowl. But this is sort of a larger version. I have just two metal bowls. These are just from the dollar store, one large one and one small one. They can be really any size, but these are just the two I have. And I've got a couple of these balls. So these balls I've used with a couple of my DIY materials. They're actually balls that came with a travel bocce ball set, but you could use golf balls or tennis balls, really, ping pong balls, anything that's large enough that's not going to be a choking hazard if your little one's still quite young, but really whatever you have lying around the house. And this is just what I had. So I have these balls in this one container and then just a kitchen spoon. This one's actually even a little spaghetti stained, but it's clean. And what he does is, or what he's practicing doing is learning how to scoop one ball and put it into the other bowl and then just going back and forth like that. In the beginning, he was just doing it with his hands, transferring from one bowl to another and back and forth like that. And now we've introduced the spoon and he's practicing spooning back and forth. So the idea is that when we get to serving dinner family style, he'll be more comfortable with scooping food out and things like that. So that's why I say I'm considering it a little bit more of a practical life activity. But that one's super easy and you can use really anything you have around the house as long as there are two containers and balls of some type 
with a scoop of some type. So really whatever you have. So that's my first idea. My next one is what they call a posting activity. From my understanding of posting, it seems to be having either a stick object or a ball object and putting it into a small hole of a container. So what I've done is I actually have this, it was an oatmeal container. And what I did was, you're gonna see in a lot of my DIYs, crafts that I have used this, it's like a craft foam type stuff. Not super Montessori because it's not a natural material. However, it is cheap and I have a lot of it left over from Halloween when I made George's sushi costume. And it's really durable. It's not, he can't rip it. He actually even bites it. It leaves a little bit of imprints, but it's staying, staying nice and it's colorful. So it's just a little bit nicer than the, you know, oatmeal container. You don't have to do that. That was just me adding a little bit of extra fans. So anyways, I just covered it in this foam material with glue gun and same with the top and I just cut a slit in the top and then for what to put in it I have these they're just dollar store popsicle sticks giant ones and I've just cut them in half because actually they're so giant that they were too long for the container believe it or not so you can just use regular popsicle sticks wherever but the, again this is just what I had and then he is supposed to put the popsicle stick inside the container and that's what they call a posting activity there's many variations on posting activities but this is just the first one that I've made for him we actually do have a thrift box which has a slit in it which I was trying to get him to put old gift cards in but the gift cards were getting stuck on an angle and he wasn't able to get them in so that was a little too challenging for him so this one was the perfect level for him to start off with and he's getting really good at it now actually I introduced this probably about two weeks ago and he loves it he just keeps going back and back and back to this one particular one and he's definitely getting close to mastering it so then I'm gonna one up to the box with the larger slit for the card Cards. But anyways, this is my DIY version of a posting activity. Really cheap, really easy. Again, you can use all kinds of different materials, all shapes and sizes, but the idea is that they put something into something. So I'm going to jump off from that and go right into object permanence box. Speaking of putting things inside of things. So one very popular Montessori material is an object permanence box and they typically you would see them in wood and they're very beautiful and well made. However, they can be very expensive. So I made one out of cardboard and he adores it. I've had this on the shelf for so long and I do rotate my materials in and out but if something's getting a lot of interest and a lot of use then I'll keep it on there because I, I do follow him and what he's into so he's been into this for a very long time a little bit less so now and more into the posting so I might swap it out soon so this is what it looks like I just made it out of an old indigo box actually it was my box that the easy peasy cup came in so what you do is you just put them through and they come out and basically it teaches them that when something's out of their sight doesn't mean that it's disappeared. It goes away and then it comes back. And there's many variations on the object permanence box. You can graduate to more complicated versions that have drawers and things like that, but you see them everywhere in Montessori. And I decided to make one and it totally does the trick. So I have used the same balls, the small bocce balls. However, again, you could use a golf ball, table tennis ball, you know, whatever you have hanging around that will drop in and roll but yes it's super simple I just took the box I cut out this part and folded the top down just taped it made a hole in the bottom and a hole at the top I'm sure there's many tutorials online that you can google or YouTube DIY object permanence box but it is I think that might have been what I did actually I, I might have even just done it by eye but anyways um, loads of fun they love it and he puts all kinds of things in this he puts like little cars he puts socks like anything you can find he's always putting in the object permanence box to see if it'll come out or not so uh, definitely one for the books for sure the other thing he's been putting in here recently and that moves me on to my next one is we had if you saw my last video it was to do with his birthday and I'll link that in the cards as well as in the description box if you want to go check out our birthday party prep and organization videos but yeah so I made pom-poms for the top of his party hat well one pom-pom for the top of his party hat and then I 
I had this extra wool, so I decided to make some extra pom-poms because they're really quick and easy to make. If you want to know how to make a pom-pom, there's tons of tutorials out there, just search it. But I had these extra pom-poms that I used for decor around the apartment, and I, I just didn't really know what to do with them afterwards, so I let him play with them. They're just little puff balls, and I mean, yeah, they're adorable. So he really likes them, and he loves putting them in the object permanence box, which totally makes sense. And actually, they get kind of stuck at the top, so he likes to kind of pop them in and then see them see them roll down. The only thing I will say about the pom-poms is he's having some teething symptoms lately and I've noticed every once in a while when he's having this urge to bite something he'll actually bite the pom-pom and pull and some of the little pieces of yarn have come out before so definitely if you're using the pom-poms I would supervise for sure just in case but uh, it happens very infrequently and other than that he absolutely loves them. So moving on to the pom-poms and what you can do with those. You can use the pom-poms in the transferring activity, object permanence box, and then this other one. So I saw an idea about, uh, this is just an old wipes container. Again, not exactly Montessori because it's not a natural material, it's plastic, but it totally is a great sort of learning, kind of like a posting activity as well, um, in something called schemas. So I could do a whole other video on schemas, but basically kids get into different patterns of doing different things over and over again. So for example, one schema is the trajectory schema, and that's about the motion of things. And so they'll, you'll see them throwing things or throwing themselves or watching things on wheels go, stuff like that. So one of the schema, and there's, there's multiple schemas and they can be in multiple schemas schemas at one time. So I'll talk about that in another video. But one of the schemas that George has been into for a while now is the schema of putting things inside of things. And so I believe it's called the enveloping schema. I can't remember exactly at this moment, but he likes to put things inside of things. So that works great with the object permanence box, but this is also a great activity and the posting of, of course as well. First of all, he likes to figure out how to, this one's just a, um, you push the button and it comes out. He has hasn't mastered that yet, but he likes trying to push the button and figure out how it opens. So that in itself is an activity. I started this activity actually with scarves. I have, I wear a lot of bandanas, you'll probably see in other videos. And so I just have them lying around. So I put a bunch of my bandana scarves inside of this box when he was younger and he used to love to pull them out. So that's one of those, if you have a little, little one and they love like pulling out wipes and stuff like that, tissues, then you'll know that that's definitely something that they they can be into. So he loves Love that when he could pull the bandanas out of here. Silk scarves is probably what you would traditionally use, but that's just what I had lying around. So pulling things out. He got over that one though, but now that he's into putting things inside of things, I've changed the way I present the activity. Instead of presenting it full of something for him to pull out, I present it empty and then I have a box of stuff he can put inside of it. And right now it is the pom-poms from his birthday. Again, they get kind of sort of stuck at the top and he has to, this one he has to work a lot harder to actually push it through and some of them are a little bigger and fluffier so you have to he has to push them even harder and he will just fill this entire box up with pom-poms and then he actually will bring it to me to open it dump them out and so that he can do it all over again he's been doing this especially yesterday he was doing it all day so that's another fantastic activity that he really has been enjoying lately and then I also have not exactly Montessori but they are Montessori aligned these shapes so I made three of them. They are just old pill bottle containers that were empty, of course, and I liked these because they have a child lock on them so they won't pop off very easily, but just to be extra safe, I made sure to hot glue gun the ends so they won't come out even if the lock breaks. The only thing with the pill bottles is definitely you want to cover them with something because you don't want them getting used to seeing a pill bottle and thinking that it's a toy. So this one, it's not obvious that it's a pill bottle it's just got the bright top and then I put the foam on top so if you're concerned about that then I've also seen people use spice jars and glue gun the top and you can do that but these I just had hanging around so I thought that they would work well the yellow one this is a few dried beans the pink one is some rice and the blue one is salt 
So really, you can put anything in these, just as long as they make different noises, and the babies love to shake them, rattle them, and hear the different noises. He enjoyed this from a really young age as well, so I would introduce these pretty early on. So the last one that I have in this room is the pull toy. So this one I also introduced quite early, and he really grasped the concept young and enjoyed it, and he still enjoys this. I only bring it out once in a while for the main reason that the cats really love it too, so it can get a little bit crazy in here. But I will bring it down, and this is what it looks like. So it's the, I'm calling it the pull box. This is the new and improved pull box, so I'm just making repairs on it, so excuse that it's not finished. But this is what it looks like. I started with just a regular cardboard box, and I just put four holes, so two on one side, two on the other. And I used the pipe cleaners first, and I just glue gunned these are tops to pouches. I saved some pouch chops, just glue gunned the pipe cleaner inside and waited for it to dry and then did the same on the other side. And that was simple. It was just a cardboard box with two pipe cleaners and four of the tops. And he loved it. So he loved it so much that he pulled it enough that it slowly, slowly made its way to the edge of the box. And I had to redo it because it was done. That's the only thing about the DIY stuff is that it doesn't wear as well as something like a wood material would. But I just keep making repairs and they're pretty hardy they last a while so I knew and improved it since I had to redo it anyways and I put of course the foam on top to make it look cuter because I'm just all about the foam right now and what I did was I did different strings so I have gold ribbon the pipe cleaners were a hit so I have two of those as well I have a little bit of that burlap yarn so now it's become a bit of a tactile sensory situation as well oh and I had one that was yarn but George got a hold of this saw it in the closet before I was done and he pulled it right out so that there's an empty hole where the yarn I put a yarn in there too so I'm gonna have to now that it's glued shut I'm gonna have to figure out a way to sort of thread it through and redo that and basically what he does so I'll show you on this one is he pulls one side and he just sees how that can affect the other end so it's like a cause and effect sort of thing it's cool and he'll just do it over and over and over again. Now he might be better at this now, but especially when he was younger, I'd actually have to hold the box for him. Same with the posting material, I have to hold it because he doesn't have the coordination to do the activity and hold the box at the same time. Now he probably at this stage won't have to do that. I haven't brought this out in a little bit because I'm, you know, improving it. But I know for the posting activity, he can now hold it by himself and do the activity. So I'm sure that'll come. But he definitely still has to work a little bit on that still. So that is the pull box. Again, great for working on cause and effect and loads and loads of fun. The last one I can think of off the top of my head is we have DIY'd a shoot in the bedroom. So we hang out in this apartment. We have our main living area and then we do have the one bedroom. And in the bedroom, we hang out in there while I do laundry and we play in there sometimes just for a change of scenery. So I do have a mini shelf setup thing actually in the bottom of my closet. And with that, I have a little shoot that I've made. So it's basically just an empty cracker container. It's one of those long cracker, cracker boxes. I just took duct tape and I duct taped it to the wall like as neatly as I could and the duct tape really reinforces it to stay because I only put like two strips at the beginning but he kept ripping it down so I put a ton of it and he just puts things through it. Kind of like the idea of the object permanence box. He sees that he puts something in and that it disappears and then it comes out again. Also really great for cause and effect. I put something in and this is what happens. He just has loads of fun with putting all kinds of different things in it. It. He also tries to put gigantic things into the tunnel. He's tried to put like stuffed animals that are like this big into the tunnel, which is about this big, and it's pretty hilarious to watch. But every moment he's learning, and uh, in this way, he's just having fun and just learning through the tunnel. I've seen people do this with paper towel rolls as well. I just find with the cracker box, it's a little bit wider, so he can get things that, that are a little bit bigger through it. So you could probably experiment with having maybe a paper towel roll and the cracker box, maybe something even a little bit bigger as well and they can kind of go back and forth and see what fits and what. So use your imagination and see what you can come up with. So I'll wrap it up today with the Montessori activities and ideas that I have showed you today. 
this is just the beginning of my Montessori journey. So it's the beginning of me figuring out how to make all kinds of Montessori activities and materials. And my little one is still only 12 months old. So we're just starting to get into the more closed-ended stuff. I do focus a lot on the closed-ended materials in this video. However, we do have a lot of open-ended play going on as well. Definitely needs time for exploration and imagination and all kinds of open-ended activities as well. So that's why I showed you the shakers that's part of just him going and being and enjoying. So I definitely try to have a combination of open-ended and closed-ended activities and materials out on our shelves. So that's it for today. I'm going to make another video before I sort of dove into the Montessori stuff. I was DIYing before for my littler baby. So when George was a lot younger, I did all kinds of sensory play with him. So I'm going to make a video that has all to do with how to DIY sensory activities for your infant. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, thanks again so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and the notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.